This video series will outline minimally invasive surgical management of complicated severe acute pancreatitis. It's an exciting collaboration between the Derby Pancreatic Obiliary and Robotic Abdominal Wall Reconstruction Unit and Behind the Knife. This content is purely for educational purposes. Consent has been obtained for patients for use of operative videos for surgical education. These videos are not a substitute for surgical training or for clinical judgment needed to manage complicated severe acute pancreatitis. So the first video in this series will be the introduction to complicated SAP. So complicated severe acute pancreatitis is a common surgical presentation. 20% of patients will develop severe pancreatitis with pancreatic complications, such as necrosis or pseudocyst. In this subset of patients, there is a 30 to 50% risk of mortality. And in those with necrosis, 50% will develop sepsis and need debridement. It's important to note that collections need to persist for four weeks to allow the wall to mature prior to intervention. The timing of intervention is critical. There should be no delay in intervention when the patient is septic. Any delay leads to prolongation of sepsis and organ failure which precludes surgical options that would otherwise offer single stage clearance of the necrosis. What factors are important when deciding on intervention? Severe acute pancreatitis is a heterogeneous disease process. So the first factor we need to look at is whether it's a liquid or necrotic collection, and whether there is walled off necrosis, also known as WAN, or a pseudocyst present. Whether there is disconnected pancreatic duct syndrome, or DPDS, and the patient's critical and nutritional state. The anatomical location is also important. Only one fifth of collections are retrogastric. Not all collections are suitable for percutaneous drainage, such as absence of a safe window between the colon and kidney, followed by video-assisted retroperitoneal debridement. The root of the small bowel mesentery or right-left retrocolic collections are difficult to treat with traditional methods. And the last factor to think about is the presence of a pseudoaneurysm. We then need to think about the aim of the interventions. So the first is to plan, involving a specialist benign MDT, to drain and debride, utilising minimally invasive surgery, if deemed appropriate, and achieving maximal clearance of the collection with the least number of interventions. In select patients, minimally invasive surgical intervention can offer single stage debridement of ward off necrosis. Patients should have appropriate physiological reserve to tolerate surgical intervention. Anatomical location of the collection can be treated surgically when in the retrogastric position, so that's using the transgastric approach, or root of the small bowel mesentery using the infracolic approach. Infracolic approach allows dependent drainage and in cases with DPDS without sepsis or malnutrition, a Rouen-Y cystojejunostomy can be performed to prevent formation of a pancreatic fistula. Cholecystectomy can be undertaken when suitable in cases of pancreatitis with gallstone etiology.
Due to the heterogeneity of SAP, it's important to note that one size does not fit all. So in summary, this educational video series will describe patient selection for minimally invasive surgical intervention in complicated severe acute pancreatitis, a stepwise approach to each surgical technique with narrated videos, and the benefit of surgical techniques for patient outcome.